Well, kind of going the other way, what did your soldiers in your unit do for entertainment? Drank beer. <laughs> they were all, most of the, uh, most of the soldiers, but ha half of the soldiers, or two, uh, a third of us maybe, were uh, were college kids because the ASDP had just right. sent, you know, college distributors throughout these. The other two thirds were, were uh, people from hillbillies and uh, people from the south. They'd have parties and they'd give beer at a low price and they'd get, get drunk on the beer and, and run around chasing. They'd finally, they, they would take a bottle of beer and shake it up and then squirt it at each other. <laughs> and uh, that was about all there was to do, I guess. Uh, then they'd sit around and talk. Before we got into, uh, into action, before we got into action, they talked, those, uh, those people who had been on maneuvers talked about what, what maneuvers were like. And we used to say, you know, when the war's over, you guys are going to talk more about the maneuvers than you talk about the war. And I think that's probably true. Because <laughs> <laughs> the maneuvers were really hard for those people. Of course, we weren't, you know, I only joined them in the last two weeks of the maneuvers. I'm just going to ask you a little bit about the people and uh, the factions involved in the war. Um, what, did you, what were your feelings about Churchill? Uh, we didn't have any feelings about it. Did you, yeah. um, did you have any um, bad feelings or any, any feelings um, about Stalin or Hitler or Mussolini? The... Stalin was a hero. Stalin was a hero. Yeah. Uh, Hitler was a bad guy, of course. Did you have any, uh, were there any slurs or anything? Against the Germans or the Japanese, or well, I uh, I was really I just accepted the fact that they had shipped the Japanese away. You know, I knew Japanese in my hometown of Manchu, and I saw them being uh, set aside and shipped off, and uh, and it's just another thing that happened. You know, when you're a kid, you everything you you just accept everything. And I was just well, you know, they're they're being shipped off, but I never. You no, know, until afterwards, I read about it afterwards, I didn't realize what a terrible, unfair thing that had done. And I don't think I would, I would, if I had heard somebody talking about them Japs, I think I would have, uh, I would have not liked that. I would have resented that. I probably would have spoken up. But that was because of my church training. Do you feel that we had a right to um, move the Japanese away from the coast? It was all a plot. It was all to plot by the California Grange to take over their land. What do you feel about the um, dropping of the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Terrible. It was uncalled for. The war was over. They were negotiating to end the war. Why the hell they had to do that, I never understand. And I really fault Tr Truman for that. Okay. I, I, he was a, supposedly a good president, but I think that was a terrible thing he did. Did your feelings change over the years about the different factions, or I mean, do you think any different about them now than you did when you heard about them during the war? Well, I think I've got more of a perspective. I'm more, I, I'm more, uh, uh, tend to think that we could have, that, that the war was a very, very bad thing. And uh, it's uh, difficult for me to say what we could have done but uh, I'm not sure. I think the worst thing about the war is that it convinced us we were in, in unbeatable. And uh, we think that we're the biggest, you know, the most important country in the world because we won the war. We supplied the wherewithal to, uh, uh, for the other countries to mount massive armies. It convinced us that uh, we were God's choice to lead the world. And I think that was a terrible thing. I'm going to ask you about some specific um, dates and maybe some um, important events during the war. What, where, where were you and what were you doing during the um, attack on Pearl Harbor? I was walking home from church in Wenatchee, Washington, and I heard somebody mention it, and I didn't know where Pearl Harbor was. Did, how, how long after was it until you found out? Well, just a day. I heard the I heard uh, Roosevelt's talk. Uh, I heard the. Uh, I knew what was happening. I know I read the paper. I listened to the radio, the radio, and uh, we had an assembly the next day in high school, and uh, they 
in the, they had the Roosevelt speech over the radio, you know, over the loudspeaker, so everybody sitting there in the auditorium could hear him speak. And we were mighty quiet when we walked back. Some kids quit school immediately. Some of my classmates quit school immediately, lied about their age, and got into the Army right away. And I said, that's to that, I let them come and get me. <laughs> How about D-Day? Uh, I forget where I was. I remember. Uh, and how about the death of Franklin Delano Roosevelt? I was walking in Germany, and uh, we just went on walking. We were walking, advancing. There was nothing happening. There was no. We weren't getting shot at that day. And uh, did you have any thoughts? I mean, were you? Dead? Oh yeah, I was like the death of a, a cousin, not a father, but. You know, that was, I was pretty sorry he died. Are there any um, interesting stories or sad or um, that stand out while, while you were in um, battle? I have to think about that. How you know, about as a radio uh, operator? You have a funny story about that. Yeah. When, uh, you're, when you're a radio operator well, and you're in the, the radio that had, We had the SCI. This was a f FM radio that mo you, most of them were AM radios, and it was—it weighed 60 pounds, and it was a heavy darn thing to carry. And uh, and it would never worked. You know, you you know, there's a, it's supposed to be the state of the art. You know, hello, and they try to call battalion, uh, Abel Biggs Flocker, Abel <laughs> Flocker, whatever the hell you call him, you know, and they. Could never get him. He says, Captain Gunn would say, Hire! He says, Get a hold of the battalion for him. Tell him we're under attack. I'd say, Okay, Captain. I say, Hello, battalion. Hello, whatever the code words was for battalion. This is I Company. I Company. I was, it was all in code, of course. And uh, <laughs> I couldn't get him. And finally, I'd be, I kept calling. He says, Hire! Get a hold of the battalion. We're under attack. And I uh, kept trying to call battalion or whatever the code words. Come in, battalion. Come in, battalion. This is I Company. And finally, I, be, I began hearing faint. I think I got him, Captain. A little faint sounds. And I, I got closer and closer. I got him, Captain. And I looked, and there was a pair of shoes. I was lying down in this in this dish. There was a pair of shoes right there. And I looked up. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a battalion headquarters radio operator. It was right there. <laughs> okay. uh, that was the SCR 300, and it was worthless. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> And, and uh, one time we were stopped for a couple of days in a town, and I went up in the in the uh, in the in the in the attic of this uh, this building, and uh, and I tried and and, I, and, he, and he says he says Har, I want you to keep keep uh, in contact with Italian all night long, and I thought how am I going to do that? I got to sleep, and so I tried a few times, and I couldn't raise him, so I just went to sleep. <laughs>